to the Kent Lab Podcast. Bright Trip is uh, offering video-based travel courses mm-hmm. um, to teach people how to experience a place with confidence. So mm. uh, a good example is we have a course on Tokyo. So if you were going to Tokyo, um, the Bright Trip course would basically teach you the story about that place and how to experience that place um, and get the most out of your trip. So we think of, you know, a, a more informed trip is a, a better trip, really. Mm-hmm. So uh, to go back to the Tokyo example, yeah, if you're traveling to Tokyo, the Bright Trip course gives you a dose of, you know, the history of Tokyo and it gives you a uh, some practical tips too on like how to ride the subway system and how to get from the airport in, into the city. Uh, and another example would be, you know, how to do ramen in in Tokyo and what is ramen and why is that important to the culture and, and how do you do it well? So the point being for bright trip, it's, it's smarter travel that mm, allows you mm-hmm. to just be prepared and just be in the place while you're there and not mm-hmm. learn how to ride the metro system or learn how to, you know, uh, do the various food scenes and things yep. like that. Yeah. Well, you know, that being the case, I mean, shoot, isn't it, wouldn't it be some of the best money you're going to spend? Like if you're going to travel to uh, Tokyo, for example, you're spending you're spending thousands to get there and back, right? I mean, you're it's, you're spending some money, um, and uh, and so if you spent some money on a travel course, uh, about a few hundred bucks, I don't know, less than hundred bucks, I don't know how much these things are, but you spend just a little bit of money, so you don't have to like learn by trial and error while you're on the trip. You're going to leverage your trip right. so much better. Yeah, no. Is that one of the that's, selling points? That's our thinking, yeah. yeah. So so we're visually teaching you, first of all. I think video is our differentiator. Mm. So there are these guidebooks out there that, you know, which are great and they serve their purpose, but we are teaching you how to experience a place, not recommendations mm-hmm. and reviews and kind of do this, do that. We are really trying to just equip you so you're able to experience that place when you hit the ground and you're not worrying about the various challenges that come with travel um, or how to pack or mm-hmm. um, what to bring. You know, you, it's, it's literally an education for that location mm-hmm. um, or building skills that help you travel well as well. So we have a course um, on how to document your trip, for example. So if you wanted to document your trip and just tell the story of your trip so you can enjoy those memories mm-hmm. later, mm-hmm. well, a Bright Trip course is there to teach you how to do that or, or how to pack is another example, how to travel with kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's honestly how I thought of Bright Trip was because we were traveling to South Africa and it was our first time to travel to Cape Town with kids mm. and I was scared to death. You have three kids, right? Three kiddos, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to know how to do it well. It felt like a high stakes um, trip. Right. So I wanted to really dive in and make sure I understood how to travel with kids and yes. how to navigate that and the com- the safety components in Cape Town and how to navigate the safety with the family and what mm-hmm. that dynamic looks like. So so now we are creating a course yeah. on Cape Town. Where so. did you look back then? Like that's what got you into Bright Trip. So what were your resources back then? YouTube or travel yeah. books, that, like so physical I, books? I, I really enjoy learning visually, so I really enjoy watching videos. Um and yeah, I looked on YouTube and it was all, for the most part, it was, it was vlogs. So mm. the motivations behind a vlog is very different than, uh, than what we're doing. So mm. obviously the, <laughs> the vlog on YouTube is uh, you're trying to get clicks, right? Okay. They're not really trying to deliver value. Mm-hmm. So the instructional quality of that was quite low. So, okay. Is it higher on like entertainment? You know, they're trying to get someone to subscribe to their YouTube channel? Right. Yeah. So they're trying to, they're trying to get paid for that click. So, yeah, so their, their oh. motivation is to, yeah, your best 12 tips for Costa Rica, well, you click on it, but it's really about, it's, it's a pretty light, um, it's not thought through, it's gotcha. a lot of flashy, you yep. know, probably women's in bikinis, that kind of thing okay. that gets you to click, gotcha. uh, but it is very low value. So I, see. I think about the X, Y axis of Bright Trip is uh, entirely video, right, and high instructional quality. Mm. So... Right now, you have like printed books that have a lot of great instructional value or some blogs, but they're no video, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have YouTube, which is really low instructional value, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, but it's all video. Mm-hmm. So we thought the kind of top right quadrant mm-hmm. was high high quality instructional video, almost like explainer videos that were really enjoyable to watch, mm-hmm. really high quality, led by experts, mm-hmm. um, but really equipped you for your trip abroad. Yes. Yep. And I think too, like we, sorry to interrupt you, yep, go ahead. but uh, we, I think about 
when you do a company, you think about like the market you're addressing. Mm -hmm. So we're addressing the travel content market, which is about a billion dollar market. They're all the legacy companies are not doing video at all for the most part and not doing it well at all. Mm. So we had, we kind of saw an opportunity to modernize the travel content market Mm -hmm. away from blogs and written words and printed books towards a video experience that, you know, had beautiful visuals and layered on animation and explainers and descriptors and just taught you visually. So these concepts really sunk in Mm -hmm. instead of an experience where you're reading or um, toting around a book. Right. Now these travel books that you've referenced, I've never bought a travel book before I traveled somewhere. And I also haven't traveled internationally very much in the last few years, but um, apparently that's a thing where, where you have like a book, if you were going to go to Tokyo you can buy a, a travel book that's all about that area. Right. So, it, and, and yeah, they call it a guidebook, travel guidebook. Okay. Um, and that has really been the medium where people have prepared for their trip in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and they have literally gone and bought a physical book or a PDF, uh, and that is the brunt of the travel content market, um, mm. if you think about it. So that mm-hmm. we think about that as our kind of addressable market. Mm. Um, people who prefer a video learning experience over a physical book or, mm-hmm. you know, or a printed book. Um, so that's how we think about our kind of addressable market. Yeah. But like in today's age, doesn't, doesn't Tokyo, apparently not, but doesn't Tokyo change enough that if you have a book that's been made, printed, published out to the public, like, isn't it kind of obsolete a couple years after all that work or no? I mean, you, you do, you co- and even with your videos, are you focusing on like, some of the core things that you know are not going to change every year at this particular location and honing in on those? I, I think there are some some kind of steadfast things that are always going to be important about Tokyo, for mm-hmm. example. Yeah, there are like places that change and businesses that change mm-hmm. and uh, those type of things, which really we would leave to a guidebook anyway because we are not trying to give you a certain recommendation or you have to go here or there or, or mm-hmm. whatnot. We are really interested in like just equipping you for that trip mm-hmm. uh, and – so you really just enjoy the trip while you're there. You're not worried. Yeah. About, yeah. Yes. You will be worried about like what restaurant to go to or what's the, how do you find ramen, you know? Yeah. But, um, we think about our place is kind of really helping you and teaching you and not like giving you certain recommendations or reviews. Cause that, yeah. that is transient, I would say. Okay. Gotcha. And guidebooks do that well. They publish a new book every two or three years. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So where can people go? Well, well, first of all, who's Bright Trip for? Is it is it for travelers? Is it for is it business to business or who who are your customers? So it's twofold. So our customers are travelers, um, those who are going on a trip uh, and enjoy traveling and want a new medium or new way to learn about a place, uh, especially using video. So that is travelers. Uh, also, we've had a lot of uh, so we have we we have our own platform that we provide these courses on. And it's just a great learning experience. We we really paid attention to just ways to consume video and to mm-hmm. progress through a course mm-hmm. that's just really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. So we've had a lot of companies approach us wanting to use our platform, so basically license our platform. Mm-hmm. So we're, we kind of envision ourselves also being a way to uh, provide a online course platform for the travel sector. Okay. What would be? Can you give us an example of someone that might white label or license your, your product? Sure. So yeah, so there's this great company called Remote Year. Uh, Remote Year, uh, they uh, basically create an atmosphere where you can go work abroad for a year. Uh, and then they, they provide you housing, they provide you um, uh, an office space, and Wi-Fi, all those kind of components that you'd want for business. Uh, and they have kind of a footprint there. So you can kind of drop into a country uh, and the next year drop into another country without having oh, wow. to really prepare. Yeah, it's a really unique model. Remote year? Remote year. Yeah. Remote year. Remote Are, year. And, and, and you're not working for Literally them. Literally a year or remote, you know. Interesting. So, and their, their thought around is, you know, work work is changing, mm-hmm. which it is. Uh, and it's not always a requirement to be in an office. Sure. Um, well, well, now we know it's not. Yeah, right. At the end of the day, very now few people actually have to go right. into an office to get work That's done. Right. <laughs> Although it's still my preference. I don't know how you find it. No, I agree. I, I, I still like to, yeah, yeah, I just, it's still my preference to come to an office. Uh, so remote year is a case where they need to onboard and train their customers. They have a certain process they go through. Um, they wanted a video first platform to mm-hmm. do that on, but they needed certain, you know, automation and certain 
ways to award certificates and to run them through that process. But they are really in, interested also in providing um, guides or or content about those locations. Mm-hmm. Um, really, a travel course is, was what they what they approached us with. So it allows us to serve their company with our platform Mm -hmm. and also license and sell our content to them. So we have Mm. kind of a two layered, uh, margin strategy. Mm -hmm. So that's the ideal scenario where they are licensing our platform on an annual basis. And they're also purchasing our content because it's right in their, um, gotcha. Right. in their niche. Do you suspect that's going to be the real moneymaker for you? Those licensing deals like that, or is it still selling courses directly to the consumers? Yeah. I think the big opportunity is the the travel content market, remaking Mm. the travel content market Mm -hmm. using video. So we, yeah, I think our travel courses one day will take the place of a physical guidebook is, is the goal. Yeah. Don't tell our guidebook. Sure. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) That, that is the, uh, the, uh, the strategy. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're well on the way already, you know? Yeah. I mean, but I yeah, mean, it's, you know, these certain industries just lag behind technology. Right. I think in, if you find one of those, uh, I'm trying to think of it, banking. Yeah. So banking is, so that's why fintech is so big is because banking has really lagged mm-hmm. when it comes to technology. Um, that's a macro example, but mm-hmm. I think the travel industry too, travel content market especially, has really not innovated, has not um mm. The most we've innovated, I would say, is a company called Culture Trip. Culture Trip basically is creating a blog with a much better experience. Hmm. So I, I, that just doesn't feel, I mean, you remember our earlier conversation, like um, creating a solution that is magnitudes better. Mm-hmm. It was it was really important to us when we created Bright Trip. So I think we feel like Bright Trip and learning through video is a much better learning experience, yeah. much ex- better experience than holding the book. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, because it's even, it's it's even, I feel like that's already the case for our generation, like folks you and I's age. But by the time Lincoln's traveling the world, he ain't reading no book. That's I mean, right. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to need some videos. It better be in his pocket, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so you were going to travel to Cape Town with your wife and kids. Mm-hmm. And you were looking around for basically resources. You want to learn how to do this trip properly. So you didn't, you know, you wanted to maximize your trip. When was that? And then when did you realize, man, there's not out there what I want to be out there. I'm going to make it, I'm going to create it myself. When, yeah. when was that? Well, let me back up a layer. So I kind of think about me, my background. Like I just love to travel. Like I just, I think my wife and I, Shannon, she, I think we're, we call ourselves expats at heart. Mm. Uh, we would rather be abroad than we would be in the United States. Not, yeah. Nothing wrong with the United States, but yeah. we just belong abroad. Um, yep. Why am I sitting here right now? I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, so I think that's just our kind of way of looking at things. Like, for example, yeah. I think I've been to more, way more countries than I have states, for sure. Like, really? Uh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, I love that. Not to interject, but I just, I love that. What I love about that is that, you know, here we have this created universe, and inside the universe we have this solar system, and eventually you get to Earth, mm-hmm. you know? And then, but it doesn't end there. Like now we get now there's humans on Earth, you know, and now we're in a day and age where we're pretty well resourced. You can fly in a plane, like you can go experience Earth all around it. So, so I feel like I I share your passion, but not the experience. <laughs> so maybe we can work on that in the coming years. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a shame we were about to travel to Paris with uh, a group uh, with a couple in our neighborhood who goes to our church. Mm. Um, of course that got canceled, but yeah, oh, we yeah. love traveling with couples. To hey, ship. that was just, by the way, that was just a month and a half ago, right? Cause yeah. it was over that time we were, had some travel and I texted you to wonder what you thought. Yeah. And you mentioned you were planning to go to Paris. You canceled that. We canceled it because I knew they were going to close Paris Disneyland. <laughs> that was the oh, point of going. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we, we had promised the kids to, to go to Disneyland. Okay. Um, but there's no way I was going to Disney outside or inside right. the United States. So we were going okay. To gotcha. Else. Nice. So Using it as an excuse to travel. Yeah. yeah. Well, coming back so, to how we started, you were saying yeah. you have a passion for international Yeah. So travel. when I think about like my kind of professional background, I think it's a nexus of education and travel. Mm-hmm. Um, so having my U.S. State Department and White House experiences and having a lot of international experience and more recently my educational technology experience um, has just created, I, I kind of sat back and said, man, what do I want to do actually? Uh, and kind of put that nexus together. And 
it just made sense. And I think the other factor that really compelled us to create Bright Trip is uh, a guidebook company that we that we began to work with, Lonely Planet, which is basically the biggest guidebook company. Uh, they agreed to partner with us on on the on Bright Trip, hmm. so they. Uh, agreed to send us customers and customer acquisition is the hardest part about any new business mm-hmm. as, as you ever, you know, anybody who's tried has started, you know, has experienced. So the fact that, uh, that they are willing to send us customers, which they're going to begin to do in, in this quarter. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I think that was really interesting to me mm-hmm. that we could raise a little capital. I already had the platform. We'd already built that, that online course platform. That um, was with Thrivest with, yep. So, okay. Yeah. The company that, I, I started Thrivus, was acquired by Ingram Content Group. Mm-hmm. Ingram was so kind. It gave me that early MVP that we built, gave me that early platform that we tested the um, the Thrivus, the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, they gave that platform back to me. So that that allowed us to not spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a platform. We already had the platform. Uh, my partners were creating the content, and we had a big industry partner willing to go with us. So that, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. risk profile for me you know and just managing risk is really important when you're doing a business Mm -hmm. that risk profile was really interesting to me that Mm -hmm. we could cheaply focus on creating the product the travel courses Mm -hmm. and not acquiring customers or not building a a platform 